Hello, my name is Andrea Jones, and I'd like to thank everybody who took the time to listen. This is my story. I am on bed rest. I've been having to walk around as much as possible, but when I get the time to rest, then I'm resting because I am carrying by Austin John Metter, and I have been carrying for two years. So I'm going to start from um, the beginning. I met Austin John Metter. Uh, in November 2015, he was abusing me uh, from the beginning of the relationship, and he had drug uh, possession. Uh, he had a charge for drug possession and theft. Um, in November 2015, a 911 call was made by a civilian uh, who witnessed Austin Metter attacking me in the Motel 6 parking lot in Conroe, Texas. Uh, there was a two-year protective order given to his mother, Cynthia Overa, uh, after she called 911 when Austin Metter attacks her in her home and he pulled a butcher knife on Cynthia Overa and chased her into her office and she called 911 and they issued a two-year protective order uh, banning him from coming to, banning him from coming on to her property in Magnolia, Texas. Then uh, a 911 call was made that same day by Cynthia Overa's husband's, Joseph Overa's sister at their mother's house in Magnolia, Texas, because Austin Metter had assaulted me outside of his grandmother's home and his aunt called the Magnolia police department and they showed up as to why he was assaulting me in front of their home. Then there was a 911 call made not too long after that in the month of November 2015 uh, by a white female civilian who had come by the motel room at the Econo Lodge in Conroe, Texas and Austin John Metter was attacking me inside of the motel room and she called 911. There was another 911 call made on Fraser Street uh in the month of December between the month of November 2015 and December 2015 from a civilian witnessing Austin Metter attacking me on Fraser Street. There was another 911 call from another civilian on North Fraser Street witnessing Austin Metter attacking me and he had been attacking me by the family dollar and while I was trying to get away he was dragging me by my feet. There was um a temporary protective order issued to me at 230 Avenue G where we had moved in together. Austin Metter and I had gotten a one bedroom studio apartment uh in Conroe, Texas. And not long after we moved in, like a day or two, we moved in December 18th, 2015. And he was arrested December 20th. I mean, we moved, <clears throat> excuse me, we moved in December 20th, 2015. I mean, we moved in December 18th, 2015. And on December 20th, 2015, Austin Metter was arrested after a next door neighbor, Mr. Chuck, called 911 because Austin Metter was assaulting me in our apartment. And he was charged with assault family violence. And he was taken to the Montgomery County Jail where he served 42 days. Austin Metter assaulted a guard in the, in the Montgomery County Jail while he was incarcerated for the assault family violence charge. And he was charged on top of that with assault on a public servant. So they dropped the assault family violence charge because I did not press charges. And they charged him with assault on a public servant. Then they released him on a two-year felony probation for assault on a public servant. He was released February 
2000. He was released February 4th, 2016 from the assault family violence charge, but he was released on a two year felony probation for assault on a public servant. There was a 911 call made by a civilian after he was released for assault on a public servant and placed on a two year felony probation. And he had attacked me in the Dollar General parking lot. And I was pregnant by him at this point. So from the Montgomery County Jail, he was ordered to go to Tri-County to be sent to a doctor to be prescribed uh, medication for mental disorders and for extreme drug addiction. By the end of February 2016, Austin Metter uh, was acting violently and erratically again. And the landlord at 230 Avenue G. Maria called 911. Austin Metter tried to rape me and he was pulling out knives in the kitchen and he started making threats of suicide. The Conroe police heard a recording of the incident and they charged Austin John Metter with Class C rape. He was released after a fine was paid and he continued to harass me on my way to work and he came up to my job being violent with me. He was charged again um, with a probation violation and a warrant was issued. The, uh, the, the probation officer found out uh, about the Class C rape charge that he was arrested for and his probation officer issued a warrant and Austin Metter was picked up by the Conroe police on a warrant issued by his probation officer. Austin Metter was sentenced to 100 days in the Montgomery County Jail as a probation violation. So we were evicted from 230 Avenue G due to frequent 911 calls. And he, I had to be out of that property. Um, he was incarcerated at the time and I had to move out of the property at the end of March 2016. So I had to uh, walk around pregnant looking for a new apartment while Austin Metter was incarcerated on the probation violation. Uh, he was issued 100 days and he was incarcerated while I was two months pregnant limping around Conroe, Texas for a new place for me and my baby. And I found an apartment at 1308 Houston Street. And I leased that apartment through Keller Williams. While I was in this new apartment, I had to call an ambulance to 1308 Houston Street. I was bleeding and I was transported to Conroe Regional Hospital uh, the, the doc, the, uh, woman who did the transvaginal ultrasound found his heartbeat and he was 16 weeks old. He was 16 weeks. Um, and I was on bed rest and the bleeding stopped. I started going to UTMB health and my exams came back that I was completely healthy. Um, Cynthia and Joseph Overa, his parents, gave me a white Grand Am when I was five months pregnant. I started going to the Woodlands Hospital for primary care and driving myself to visit Austin in the Montgomery County Jail. 
he was getting in trouble and fighting and he got moved to a level three unit. I was six months pregnant when Austin Meadow was released from the Montgomery County Jail from the probation violation from the rape charge. He came to my home at 1308 Houston Street, apartment three, Conroe, Texas. It was a two bedroom, one bedroom for me and one bedroom for my baby boy's nursery. He was drinking 40 ounce beers and big cans of beer. He snatched off the wall sockets. He tore off the light switches. He punched huge holes in the walls. He was throwing beer bottles and kitchen items. He was flipping over the lazy boy recliner sofas in the living room. A 911 call was made by my downstairs neighbor, Shay, an African-American woman. She reported to the Conroe police that she thought he was hurting me upstairs. Um, I ran out of the house one night naked and screaming. He picked me up by my belly and he carried me back upstairs by my baby bump. Uh, my baby bump was hurting and my baby was moving sluggish. I went to the emergency room at Conroe Regional to be monitored. He was picking me up in my bedroom during an altercation where he had become violent with me in the home. And he uh, tried, he was trying to slam me uh, by my stomach when I was pregnant with Melbourne. He kicked dents in the white grand dam and he was beating me up and robbing me for the vehicle. A 911 call was made by a civilian on Fraser Street by my home and it was a black woman. She had gotten out of her vehicle while he was uh, attacking me in the streets. Um, as I was trying to walk away, he was getting violent with me and the black woman had gotten out of her car. I was visibly pregnant in my third trimester and she kind of got in the middle of it and she got out of her car in the middle of traffic and she ran up to me and was screaming, ma'am, are you OK? Uh, uh No, I'm calling 911. And she started calling 911 immediately. And her and the male who was in the car would not drive off until they uh, figured that I was OK because it was uh, obvious that he was attacking me. Um, and the police were used to being called out. He punched out the glove compartment inside of the white Grand Am while we were in the car. He tore down the rear view mirror while we were in the vehicle. Um, he made the car break down, speeding off in the vehicle on nights that he was abusing me. Uh, he kicked my front door, jamming the locks. To where you could not really open the door. Sometimes you would be locked inside of the home or you would be locked outside of the home because he had kicked the door so bad that sometimes the locks would jam and lock you in the home or you could not get in with the key. He messed with the locks in the bathroom to where I could not lock the bathroom doors. He punched holes in the closet doors. Uh, with his fist and I called uh, I called 911 and I tried to get away from him one day when he was screaming and yelling and calling me names and I knew that it would get violent and I snuck to the car and tried to pull out in the white grand am and he jumps on the back of the vehicle as I was trying to pull out of the driveway and I started calling 911, telling them that I was trying to get away 
from Austin John Matter and he was kicking the windows on the back of the car as I was trying to get away trying to kick in the window with steel toe boots on and he rolled on the back of the car while I was on the phone with 911 and I was trying to drive a slow distance to to give him opportunity to get off of the car without getting hurt and trying to buy myself enough time for the police to arrive because I did not feel safe stopping the vehicle or, you know, having any physical contact with him until the police arrived. So he uh, was trying to force me to have sex with him and oral sex with him, trying to force me to have sex and forcing me to have oral sex with him in my apartment. Uh, he was yelling at me in the doctor's office at the Woodlands Hospital to where one of the nurses or the uh, women from the administration department had to sit us down to see what was going on because he was yelling at me at one of my doctor's appointments that he went to with me. I believe it was the first one that he went to with me. Um, he was yelling at me in the car he was yelling at me in the grocery store and he was cheating on me with white women and refusing to leave my home. A uh, 911 call was made by a, a check cash manager uh, because he assaulted me inside of the store while I was still pregnant with Melbourne and he refused to um he refused to um to behave uh like a you normal civilian inside of the store so she had to call 911 and she was concerned about my safety he had slit my thumb open when he hit me um, I believe I may have tried to block the hit and uh, we stepped outside of the store and spoke with the Conroe Police Department. Um, he hit me because I had put a lock on my cell phone and he did not want me to have a lock on my cell phone where he could not access um, the, the information inside of my cell phone. So he hit me inside of the Ace Check Cash and Store. Um, he continued to abuse me in my home at 1308 Houston Street, Apartment 3, Conroe, Texas, 77301. And he put me in the hospital two times. I had to go to the Woodlands Hospital and to Conroe Regional Hospital to be monitored. I did not know if my baby was alive. Andrew Jones, my dad, he uh, signed my birth certificate and he came to live with me because he was homeless a little before I gave birth to Melbourne. And he saw that Austin was abusing me in my home. Austin Matter was abusing me in front of Andrew Jones. And one day, Andrew had to fight him. And the only thing that I had to protect myself was a small pocket knife. I was uh, very huge. I was about to give birth. I was actually in the stages of labor, but not ready to be admitted into the hospital yet. And he had stayed out drinking and he had gotten drunk and came back to my apartment and he started to attack me um, while I was in labor in my home. And Andrew jumped in and he was paralyzed on the one side of his body because Andrew has suffered from many strokes and he was only able to defend me with the other side of his body. And he almost had a stroke trying to defend me from Austin Matter. And he hemmed Austin Matter up 
on the wall and he almost had a stroke. So when I was at the Woodlands Hospital in the labor and delivery unit, Austin Metter attempted to attack me in the labor and delivery unit. And two of the white female nurses came into the labor and delivery unit and they tried to calm him down uh, and tell him that he could not behave like that, uh, that he needed to uh, calm himself down. And he started to flip the medical equipment on to the white female nurses and they ran to get a white male security guard. He was an older, heavy set white male, and he had to make Austin Matter leave the hospital. And Austin Matter was waiting outside in the parking lot with my dad, Andrew Jones. And the uh, medical staff was concerned about my safety. And the uh, white male officer asked me, Did I feel comfortable leaving the premises with Austin John Matter? I was so used to being abused. I didn't really know what to do. So I just left because my dad was there and he had driven us in his Mercedes Benz to the hospital and we rolled back with him. And I had gotten a notification from the staff at the Woodlands Hospital that Austin Metter could not attend the birth of our son because of his behavior in the hospital. They were saying that because he was violent, that he could not be at the birth. And I was getting ready to give birth. So Austin Metter told me that he would not allow me to give birth at the Woodlands Hospital because he could not be there for the birth of our son. And... I almost had to have my baby in the parking lot. I was in labor in the parking lot at Conroe Regional Hospital. And I had already spoken to the staff to see if I could give birth there. And they didn't really know what was going on. But they said that they would allow me to. But when I came, it was a big issue about whether or not they would allow me to give birth there. And I was afraid to tell them why he had been banned uh, from the Woodlands Hospital because I was afraid they would not allow him to be there and that that would make it harder for me to find somewhere to give birth. So I was in labor in the parking lot. And in the emergency room at Conroe Regional until the emergency uh, staff in the emergency room at Conroe Regional forced them to let me come to the labor and delivery unit to deliver my baby. And uh, when Melbourne was born, he almost died. He could not breathe. When I gave birth to Melbourne, October 2016, he came out with a very low APGOR score. I believe that's what they call it, of one. And they had to uh, bring him to the NICU. When I brought my son home at 1308 Houston Street, apartment three in Conroe, Texas, Austin Metter was continuing to attack me. He was attacking me and attempting to abuse my newborn. Uh, he was punching me in my breast after I gave birth to my baby. And he tried to flip him out of his stroller. Um, he was throwing objects at him. Uh, he was kicking holes in the walls, uh, stealing my debit card and my vehicle. Um, he was punching, uh, holes all over the walls, all in the walls. There were probably up to about 10 to 15 holes punched and kicked in the walls of my two bedroom apartment. Um, he was kicking the back door with my newborn in the back seat. 
um, and he was trying to punch the window and break the window with uh, my newborn in the back seat. Um, he was vandalizing my home um, and ransacking my home. And I had to um, get out of the home. And he was getting racist uh, and homosexual men uh, and jealous black girls and black guys to try to gang up on me in my home. He was using methamphetamine and he was always drunk. Um, he was throwing beer bottles and I had to go to a nearby convenience store and call 911 as he was ransacking my home. And my father, Andrew Jones, also had to leave the home. He was tearing down the blinds and ripping through everything. There were clothes everywhere. Um, and he was arrested from my apartment at 1308 Houston Street when my son was six weeks old on December 20th, 2016. And they charged him with a probation violation because he was still on the two-year felony probation for assault on a public servant from when he had assaulted the guard while he was incarcerated for assault family violence from when he assaulted me in our one-bedroom home at 230 Avenue G. So I asked Andrew Jones to leave so that I could raise Melbourne in a healthy environment I just needed it to be me and him so that I could recover and so that I could bond with my son and raise him right. And he had his nursery and I had my own room and it was just me and Melbourne Halo Matter. Austin Matter was in TDCJ uh, serving a two year sentence for assault on a public servant. So he was out of the home now, uh, and it was just me and Melbourne. And Melbourne was six weeks old when he went to TDCJ. And it was just me and my son, who was six weeks old, at 1308 Houston Street, Apartment 3, 2016. And there was no one else in the home with us.